Duplicate acknowledgements. I've got hundreds of them. Chris, my network's falling apart. Hey, you don't have to go far in a trace file to find a few duplicate acknowledgements. It's good. I understand that. We see them all the time. But how do we interpret them? And what do we do about them? Stick around. All right, so in this video, we're gonna be taking another deep dive into TCP, and we're gonna be taking a look at duplicate acknowledgements. Hey, it's something you're gonna see. Don't have to look far to find them. Now, we're, I'm gonna go ahead and use the trace file that is in the link down below. If you went ahead and watched the retransmission video or the sequence analysis video, this is exactly the same trace file. We're just building on these topics to get a deeper understanding of how TCP works. So you might wanna go check out those videos first before we dig into this one, but let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so duplicate acknowledgements. What does that mean? Well, kind of like the name implies, right? Duplicate ACK, but it's very specific in why Wireshark flags it that way. So let's go ahead and take a look at one in this trace file. So here we've got our SynSynAC ACK, we've got our handshake, we've got our client hello, we've got some retransmissions. We've already talked about this so far in this trace file. But what I'm gonna do is come down here to our dupe ACK. Ooh, okay, so I see that one. And I also see a few more down here, do pack two, do pack three, but what do these mean and, and what do I do? All right, so basically the reason why they're called duplicate acknowledgements is because if I come over here to my ACK number, you notice the ACK number in this direction. So this is the client ACKing data that came in. So the client is saying, okay, 1609, I'm good to that sequence number. But if we look up above, I already saw 1609 up here. So we've already seen an acknowledgement for 1609 come from the client to the server acting that data. But the thing is, the reason why this is flagged as a duplicate acknowledgement is because you see the sequence numbers, 215, that means that I've sent 215 bytes to the server. This happened previous, it happened up at the client hello. And so that data was acknowledged, all right? So I don't have to retransmit it, but I'm up to 215 in my sequence numbers. If I come down here in the dupe back, my sequence number is the same. It's 215. So you're going to see a dupe back when your sequence number has not advanced or you're not sending data. This is just an empty packet. Okay, so you're not advancing data in the opposite direction. But this acknowledgement is repeated. You're saying it again. So by definition, it is a duplicate acknowledgement. But here's the deal. There's a lot of times when you see dupe acts, what we got to do, the important part isn't in the actual ACK number or in the actual upper part of the TCP header itself. What I'm going to be interested in doing in dupe acts is I want to come down here to options. And when I'm dealing with a station that is SAC capable, selective acknowledgement able, then I'm going to see a SAC block down here a lot of times. Now we're going to take a look at selective acknowledgement in a deep level in another video. However, what we want to really understand about duplicate acknowledgements is oftentimes they're carrying a SAC block. And this is where I'm going to focus my attention when I'm doing my analysis. So let's go ahead and take a look at another dupe back in our trace file. So if I come down here to this next one, this is dupe back number two. Here I see the same ACK number, same sequence number. Dupe back number three, same max number, same sequence number. But if we look down at the SAC blocks, see those have grown a little bit. Again, don't worry too much about that right now. Just know that if I see any more acts coming from the client that are not moving that ACK number forward, as long as I get stuck on 1609, uh, then I'm going to see dupe acts. So what if you have a trace file where you have hundreds of dupe acts? Uh, does that mean the sky is falling and everything's falling apart? Well, no, not really. Slow down a minute. Basically, that means in most cases that you just have a lot of latency between the client and the server. Between those two TCP stacks that are exchanging data, that just means you have a lot of time. Or maybe we could think of it this way. Imagine that I sent you 100 packets. All right, and I just popped them off. Just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to packet number 100. But the network dropped packet number 2. Let's say you got 1, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 100. Okay, there's going to be a gap in the sequence numbers. So what you're going to do on your side is you're going to say, okay, Chris, I'm good to one. And then you jump the sequence number, right? So, so you never got packet two, the, the sequence numbers that are within packet two. I'm just going to make it easy and call them packets. But anyway, you didn't get the data in packet two. So what you're going to start doing is acking for the data in packet three, packet four, packet five, packet six. So all of those acknowledgments following our point of loss, packet two, all of the acknowledgments for that subsequent data is going to look like a dupe back. 
That's how Wireshark is going to flag it. So after that point of loss, you're literally for every single other packet, once TCP realizes that there's loss, it goes into its loss recovery. So every packet gets act. You're going to send me an act for every single packet all the way up to packet 100. So on my end, I'm going to see 97 dupe acts come flying in, but all of them are going to be telling me about that loss in packet number two. Now, why are they dupe acts? Because in every single one of those acknowledgements, the ACK number here in the TCP header, this ACK number is not going to be advancing. It's going to be stuck on packet number one. You're going to tell me, okay, I got packet number one and packet three. I got packet number one, three and four. I got packet number one, three, four, five. Packet number one, right? So you're going to be telling me about the successful receipt of all of those sequence numbers, but what Wireshark is going to do is label them as dupe acts. So here's our takeaway point. If you see a dupe back, don't sweat too much. It just means that there was some data loss and TCP is trying to recover it. A dupe back literally means that this is the same sequence number that's not being advanced, so we're not sending any data in this packet, and the acknowledgement number is exactly the same. That's when Wireshark will flag it as a dupe back. So when are dupe acts a big deal? When should we be worried when we see dupe backs? Well, basically dupe backs are indicating that we have packet loss. So if we're on our network and this is a system that we completely control from one endpoint to another endpoint, or maybe it's a local server and you have your local clients, this means if you see a lot of dupacks or they're happening uh, almost like a cycle, you're seeing them and then you're seeing them and then they clear out, then you see them again, uh, those indicate that you're getting packet loss on your network. So this is something we might wanna go investigate, take a look at our switches, take a look at our routers for any kind of indicators, any kind of discards, any kind of FCF issues, layer two problems, and that can help us to troubleshoot retransmissions and dupacks that go along with them. All right, so I hope this video was helpful for you. Please comment down below, let me know what you thought. Also, let me know what else you would like to see when we're doing our TCP deep dive. Soon we're gonna be talking about selective acknowledgement. So. Go ahead and wait for that video. It's coming soon and I'll see you on that video. Take care.